Good morning and welcome to everyone uh, to UC Davis, especially for those of you who are not normally on campus every day. My name is Helene Dillard and I'm the Dean of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences here. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first UC Davis Symposium on Agricultural, Environmental and Social Sciences. So before we begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered. For thousands of years, this land has been the home of the Putwin people. And today, there are three federally recognized Putwin tribes, the Kachaldehi Band of Wintun Indians of the Calusa Indian community, the Kletzaldehi Wintun Nation, and the Yoshadehi Wintun Nation. The Putwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It has been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. We are honored and grateful to be here today on their traditional lands. Reading the land acknowledgement has become a tradition before we start any major event or meeting at UC Davis. I think today in particular, it is important to pause and recognize the committed stewardship of the Putwin people, the historical significance of our role as stewards over the last century, and the current role we play as stewards of the land and leaders in research, education, and outreach. So I'm really pleased to see uh, the full crowd that we have here today. We have faculty, staff, and students in the audience, as well as government officials, community leaders, and friends of the college, all here to celebrate the work of our university and our commitment to supporting the needs of California. We have Senator Dave Cortese here, who is also a UC Davis alum. We have representatives from the offices of US Senator Alex Padilla, Congressman Mike Thompson, Assembly Majority Leader Cecilia Aguiar Curry, and Senator Bill Dodd, and Assembly Member um, Stephanie Wynn. An abundance of researchers are here, and we're excited to share our latest scientific efforts and talk with you about how UC Davis experts are partnering across the state to tackle some of the bigger challenges that we face here in California. The panel discussions, the lightning talks, and poster sessions were organized to give you a deep look at the vast breadth and depth of the solutions being discovered and developed in our college and the opportunities for greater partnership and collaboration. For those of you who are new to UC Davis, the campus was established in 1908 as the university farm for the University of California, Berkeley, with a primary focus on agriculture. With time, the mission of the farm grew to serve the needs of California beyond agriculture, resulting in the expansive and comprehensive campus that we see today. Last month, UC Davis celebrated our 110th anniversary of research and science-based education as a powerhouse of an institution with 107 undergraduate majors, 101 graduate degrees, four colleges, six professional schools, and more than 38,000 students. As an R1 university, we are focused on both applied and basic research, which generates new knowledge and creates multiple opportunities for students to learn and grow. The College of Envi Agricultural and Environmental Sciences is one of four colleges at UC Davis. In our college alone, we have over 380 faculty members, approximately 7,600 undergraduate students in 27 majors, and more than 1,000 graduate students in 22 graduate groups and programs. UC Davis sits on 5,300 acres of land, and 2,300 of those acres are dedicated to agricultural research and teaching. We have 17 research facilities affiliated with our college, including specialized classrooms and laboratories, numerous greenhouses and growth chambers, multiple animal facilities, high-performance computing space, and museum collections. While our roots may be in agriculture, our college is incredibly diverse with a variety of dis disciplines in the environmental and human and social sciences. We are recognized both nationally and internationally as number one in agriculture, plant sciences, animal science, forestry, and agricultural economics. Our faculty in wildlife, fish, and conservation biology 
are leaders in research productivity and impact. And we are well known nationally for excellence in horticulture, biodiversity education, ecology, toxicology, environmental sciences, soil science, agronomy, entomology, nutrition, and biological and agricultural engineering. Our college mission is to promote agricultural, environmental, and social sustainability through research, teaching, and public engagement to meet those big challenges of global change in the 21st century. This mission to serve the public through research, academics, and public service is at the core of everything we do. We recognize that our relationships and partnerships help us advance our work and support communities, find solutions for industry, and help define policies that tackle issues surrounding air quality, water, agriculture, climate change, just to name a few. The College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences is unique in that agricultural, environment, and human and social science needs are all housed under the same roof. This creates opportunities for collaboration across disciplines that wouldn't necessarily happen if our faculty were spread across several colleges or institutions. A perfect example of this synergy happened recently between Professor Ermias Gabrab from the Department of Animal Sciences and Salida Wong, an Associate Professor of Cooperative Extension in the Department of Food Science and Technology. Together, they fed dairy cows fresh grape pumice left over from the wine processing to see if the tannins can help reduce methane emissions while increasing healthy fats in the milk. In this one example, we have agricultural scientists working with cooperative extension specialists in food science and technology under the common goal to decrease methane emissions, increase the nutritional value of milk, and find a solution to managing wine grape byproduct for an industry that generates thousands of tons of pumice while simultaneously helping the dairy industry meet the state's emission goals. This is one project that represents collaboration in agriculture, the environment, food science, and nutrition. And you'll get to hear more because Dr. Kerbob is our first speaker this morning. We see other examples of this collaborative work throughout the college. Several of our scientists are partnering with farmers, ranchers, water districts, government agencies, all to help improve our soil health. This includes creating smartphone apps and interactive maps to help farmers explore the properties and possibilities of the soil on their farms, groundwater recharge and banking, carbon sequestration, and the use of cover crops as soil amendments. The Center for Regional Change recently created an innovative online database to help communities compare the general plans for cities and counties. California law requires each of the 482 cities and 58 counties in the state to develop a, and adopt a general long-term plan for the development of communities. This database allows users to look at all of the plans in one place to help guide land use planning decisions. Researchers in the Department of Plant Sciences are using drone photography and forest mapping with machine learning, remote sensing, and big data to answer forest ecology and land management questions to help stra develop strategies for forest recovery uh, from wildfire, drought, and disease. Faculty in the departments of wildlife, fish, and conservation biology and animal science are partnering with state agencies and indigenous communities to support Chinook salmon, Delta smelt, and white and green sturgeon in a variety of conservation efforts to protect endangered species and restore the rivers and streams to create healthy ecosystems. Dr. Ann Tajim will speak about some of this work during the water panel. We're teaching our students to be critical thinkers, to separate the truth from fiction, to learn how to know what data to seek, and to conceive of solutions to challenges we have yet to define. The Agricultural Experiment Station, or AES as we like to say, is directly tied to our partnership and mission to serve the state of California and through our faculty. The funding we receive supports all the examples of work you will hear about today. For those of you who are not familiar, funding for this type of scientific research center 
dates to 1887, and each state has an Agricultural Experiment Station, an AES, which employs approximately 13,000 scientists throughout the entire United States. And while the Ag Experiment Station has maintained its historic name, it's a bit of a misnomer, because as you're gonna to see today, the Experiment Station also supports work across the environmental and human sciences. Approximately 250 of our faculty across all 14 departments in the college have an AES component to their appointment, and they are charged with finding solutions to our state's most pressing issues. So you will hear from 27 of them today uh, during their talks, uh, their lightning talks and panel discussions. When you combine these efforts with the efforts of campus-based cooperative extension specialist faculty who directly engage with the communities they serve, you create an incredibly powerful connection and a pathway that leads to the discovery of applicable solutions in the field and communities. Our partnerships with state officials, NGOs, and private industry help us create solutions that support Californians, and the funding we receive from the AES helps drive our mission to find those solutions. So this work is critical as we continue to study and research all the ways to make our world a sustainable place to live. Our collaborative spirit and committed, diverse faculty, students, and staff make us uniquely capable of creating solutions that improve the food we eat, the air we breathe, the animals we nurture, the communities we engage, and the planet we steward. Today celebrates existing research and continued relationships, but we hope it also marks the beginning of new partnerships and collaborations. I encourage you to network, ask a lot of questions, grapple with the complexity of our state's issues, and seek out people who you think might have the potential to collaborate with you on solutions in unique and new ways. It's going to take a village to solve these very big, wicked problems of our time, and we are home to that village right here at UC Davis. Today was designed to both celebrate the work of our faculty and the accomplishments of our college and connect people with opportunities to generate new ideas and partnerships. There are 40 examples of incredible work just waiting to be discussed in addition to the lightning talks and panelists. Please follow up with your colleagues during the break and spend some time connecting with the poster session presenters at lunch and during the reception, which will feature California wines. I want to acknowledge the policy workers, the growers, the community leaders, friends of the college who took time out of their busy schedules to be here today, and I'd like to thank our special guests external panelists and keynotes, especially Secretary Crowfoot, Secretary Ross, Kim McCoy-Wade, Rajinder Sahoda, Stuart Wolf, Alfred Melbourne, and Eric Hulse. They'll all be here today. So some people are gonna be migrating in and out. Uh, some of the faculty have to teach courses today. They're still not off the hook for that. Um, so we're gonna have a evolving door, but uh, it'll be a, a really good session uh, starting us off this morning. So I am now going to turn the microphone over to Professor Court Anastasio, who is the moderator for the first panel, which is focused on air. <laughs> 